So I'm Dr. Michael Rudin. I'm a cardiac surgeon from the Houston Methodist Hospital. I'm a professor of cardiothoracic surgery and the Allison Family Distinguished Chair of Cardiovascular Research. And the subject today is the four-year results of the Evolute Low Risk Trial. Well, I think there are a number of unmet needs of tumor patients, one of which is defining the data for younger patients. If you look at the TVT registry, you'll see that last year in the U.S., we did 58,000. 503 commercial transcatheric powder. In 2003, that's 2022. In 2023, we'll do over 100,000. Now, that data that has been driven by the data from randomized trials, like the randomized trial we're talking about today, and that's led to Evolute being approved at all risk levels. And that's even influenced our guidelines, which now no longer use risk as a standalone criteria for deciding between surgery and a tumor. However, they do say if you're under 65 or gonna live 20 years or more, you should still have surgery. And if we look at how people are following the guideline, we can look at the Visit National Database in the US, the national database that covers about 95% of the academic medical centers, where they did a study between 2015 and 2021 of isolated aortic valve replacements. By 2021, 47.5 of these were now being done by TAVR in patients less than 65. So one of the things we want to know is, do we have data to support this? And one of the unmet needs is finding out, are the results we're going to see from these studies going to apply to younger studies? The mean age in the low-risk evolutive trial was 74, and only about 23% of people were less than 70. So we still need more data on younger patients. We need data on asymptomatic aortic stenosis. We need data on moderate aortic stenosis. We need more data on bicuspid bouts of randomized trial to be very helpful. But for today... I think one of the unmet needs is, do we have data for what we're doing? So the, the Medtronic system is a nitinol base, which is a metal with a memory, and it has porcine pericardial uh, leaflets. Now, most other valves have bovine pericardial leaflets, which are thicker. Porcine is thinner, it moves better, and has eight times the tensile strength you need, allows us to then bring this down to a smaller size as we implant it. We do most of these with an inline approach, which then means it's a 14 French equivalent, not just the sheath, but the actual device is 14 French equivalent that, that goes in. It's a self-expanding super annular valve, and one of the, and it's recapturable up to about three quarters of deployment. And one of the things we've noticed about this valve is it has superior hemodynamics to surgery in every randomized trial at every time point tested, which is somewhat unique to this valve in randomized trials. And it's been shown to have superior durability and superior performance. And the purpose of the four-year study is to see if this superior durability, superior hemodynamics, superior performance translate into better clinical outcomes. So the study was designed to study symptomatic severe arachnosis, and those felt to be at a low risk for surgery, a mortality risk of 3% or less. They had to have anatomy that was suitable both for TAVR with an involute core valve or surgery. They were all seen by a local, a local heart team that had to uh, make sure they had inclusion criteria, no exclusion, and fit, fit the anatomy. Then they went up to a national uh, screening team. If they passed eligibility there, they were randomized one-to-one -one between May of 2016 and May of 2019 uh, between uh, core valve or Evolute and surgery. Now, we started actually with some original core valve 31s, first generation, about 3.1%. About three-quarters were the second-generation Evolute R, and less than a quarter were the third generation Evolute Pro. So we were actually learning new valves as we went through this trial. They were randomized one-to-one. -one. Our primary endpoint was all-cause mortality or disabling stroke. Well, the key findings were that at, at four years, Haver had significantly better all-cause mortality and disabling stroke than did surgery. And it, it, re it represented a 26% relative reduction in the rate of death or stroke compared to surgery. Reached a p-value of 0 0.05, as close as you can get without being statistically superior. And I think the thing that's unique about this is we all know that TAVR has an early advantage over surgery as far as durability, stroke, and recovery. The question has always been, will that durability last or will surgery catch up and the lines collapse on each other and maybe even cross like they did in the Partner 2A trial. Well, if you look at one year, the delta in favor of TAVR for evolutive surgery was 1.8%. At two years, it was 2%. At 
At three years, it's 2.9 percent. At four years, it's 3.4 percent. So not only has the durable, not only has this advantage persisted, it's actually widened. Evolute is the only valve that's ever shown not just the persistence of its advantage over surgery, but a widening of that advantage. If we break it down into all-cause mortality or disabling stroke, it's driven mainly by better all-cause mortality in TAVR. It's 9% for TAVR, and it's 12.5% uh, it's uh, for surgery for P-value of 0 0.07. Look at strokes. The curves are flat. There's no ex in increase in stroke in TAVR, probably because Evolute has a very low rate of clinical and subclinical thrombosis. If you look at a, a, a endpoint of all-cause mortality, disabling stroke, or hospitalization, we see that it's still statistically significant at, at, to the 0.04 level in favor of TAVR. In fact, it's 3.7% delta at one year, 4.4% delta at four years. So again, not only is TAVR maintaining its superiority, it's widening over time. I think this is very impactful data. Well, I think there's a number of take-home messages from this trial. I think that, that a trial like this has some significant clinical implications in low-risk patients. And it points to me that TAVR should be, with an evolute valve, should be the first transcatheter valve used in a low-risk population like this is likely to survive. And that's evidenced by the fact that we've shown a 26% relative reduction of stroke, uh, a disabling stroke or mortality for evolute versus surgery and a P-value of 0 0.05. We've shown uh, a, uh, almost a trending mortality in favor of tower to a 0.07 level. Uh, we've also seen that there's more dur better durability with TAVR. We have 10-year data out of the Notion trial, which also shows no mortality difference between the original uh, first generation core valve and surgery. Uh, we've also shown that, that TAVR had better valve performance in surgery. And so when you look at the, and it has superior human dynamics at every time point, so when you look at that fact that Evolute is the only valve when randomized against surgery has superior human dynamics at, at every time point, has shown superior structural valve durability, has shown superior valve performance, and now shows superior primary impact, the superior primary endpoint of all cause mortality to say stroke or hospitalization, it, it really it should be the valve of first choice, particularly when you use a younger active patient. Well, I think the, the next step is, is that, you know, as you, as you saw what I, early on, people are moving to lower risk patients right now without a lot of data. And we'd like to make sure that we make this data available as often as possible. So instead of just reporting it one, two, five, in 10 years, we're gonna report this data every year. So we think knowing the data at low risk is very important for the patients and the heart teams that help them make decisions. This trial will be followed out for 10 years and we'll report the data every year for 10 years. And as we further out we go, the more confident we can be that this valve is the valve of first choice. No, I think that this is, a, you know, as a surgeon, I think this is a really a fascinating trial. Uh, and as a surgeon, I would not have predicted that TAVR would beat surgery at this level with this valve. And it hasn't uh, necessarily beat surgery with other uh, valves. Now, next week at TCT, you'll see the five-year partner results. Dr. Leon will present that. We'll present these four-year results. And I think that's going to be a very interesting juxtaposition as we see how these two trials behave in these two fundamentally different valves. And both these trials will be followed for 10 years. I think we're generating, by far, the best data that's been generated for structural valve disease ever.